Okay, so as promised, I'm going to move on to another book. Um, and I've decided to take a seeming turn, but maybe not so radical as it might first seem, to Chris Hedges' The Death of the Liberal Class. And what I wanted to do in this particular recording is just to introduce Hedges um, because he is an interesting guy in his own right and because you guys need to um, know who he is if you don't, uh, know something about his background. It's always helpful in, um, in determining uh, uh, you know, how to take a particular work, work is to know something about the person's background. So, I mean, one thing that I picked up from the Wikipedia page on Hedges is this. He has described himself as a socialist and more specifically as a Christian anarchist, identifying with Catholic activist Dorothy Day in particular. Well, <clears throat> that says a lot to me right there. Uh, socialist wouldn't be uh, really the correct uh, title for him, even though it, it says he described himself as a socialist. But if he particularly describes himself as a Christian anarchist, that's a, a different kind of beast than what normally you would think of as a socialist, especially identifying with Dorothy Day, um, who's a figure some people know about, but not many um, but if you've ever lived in a big city, most likely you may have run a, across a Dorothy Day house. Um, Dorothy Day was the founder of the Catholic Workers' Movement, and um, it was a Christian anarchist as well. And what that really meant, I think, to Dorothy Day was that you weren't going to wait for anybody to do anything that you could do yourself in cooperation with other people. So, you know, we have this conception that anarchists are, uh, misconception, I should say, that anarchists are crazy people that go around trying to wreck everything and destroy order. But um, actually, the theory of anarchism has to do with creating order freely out of free cooperation without um, structures that impose uh, order on people. So, Dorothy Day houses are... Um, you know, anybody can start one. If you go and look at their website, uh, basically it says, you know, you don't have to be a Catholic. You don't have to be a Christian. You, you know, a lot of, a lot of people who start them are, but you don't have to be anything other than you have to have the intention of starting a house, uh, where in some way people cooperate, you know, and take care of each other. Some of them take care of the poor in, in inner cities. Some of them, they've started up gardens and urban farms and, you know, they, they live together and farm together and feed each other. And anyway, so Christian anarchism is different from socialism. And many Americans in particular think of socialism, um, sort of equate it with either democratic socialism from Europe, which tends to be seen as kind of atheistic, um, or they see it as um, even worse, like the old time Soviet or Chinese communist leaning type of ideology. Anyway, um, I knowing this about Chris, Christopher Hedges um, means a lot to me because a Christian anarchist is somebody who definitely um, has values, knows why he believes what he does. Um, it says at the top of the Wikipedia page, he's an American journalist, Presbyterian minister, and Princeton University professor. And... Um, Interestingly, another thing it says is he has taught college credit courses for several years in New Jersey prisons. He teaches a course through Princeton University in which the class is composed of half prisoners and half Princeton undergraduates. Well, now, now there's a little bit of anarchism. Um, who comes up with that idea? So that's interesting. So he's a contributor to um, a blog called Truth Dig. And so I'm going to read from his bio from here because this would have been put up by himself or at least approved by him a little bit more about him. It says, Chris Hedges is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, New York Times bestselling author, former professor at Princeton University. Um, I don't know. Well, maybe that Wikipedia article is a little out of date or he could still be teaching them for all we know. Activist and ordained Presbyterian minister. He has written 11 books, including New York Times bestseller Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, 
2012, which he co-authored with the cartoonist Joe Sacco. His other books include Wages of Rebellion, The Moral Imperative of Revolt, 2015, Death of the Liberal Class, 2010, Empire of Illusion, The End of Literacy and the Triumph of Spectacle, 2009, I Don't Believe in Atheists, 2008, and the best-selling American Fascists, The Christian Right and the War on America, 2008. His book, War is a Force that Gives Us Meaning, was a finalist, and that was 2003, a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle Award for Nonfiction and has sold over 400,000 copies. He writes a weekly column for the website Truth Dig in Los Angeles. Hedges spent nearly two decades as a foreign correspondent in Central America, the Middle East, Africa, and the Balkans. He has reported for more than 50 countries during his work for the Christian Science Monitor, National Public Radio, the Dallas Morning News, and the New York Times, for which he was a foreign correspondent for 15 years. He was part of a New York Times team of reporters awarded a Pulitzer Prize in 2002 for coverage on global terrorism. He also received the Amnesty International Global Award for Human Rights Journalism in 2002. Hedges speaks Arabic, French, and Spanish and studied classics, including ancient Greek and Latin, at Harvard University. He has taught at Columbia University, New York University, Princeton University, and the University of Toronto. He currently teaches a class through Princeton University at a state prison. Well, that answers our question. In New Jersey, where half the students are Princeton undergraduates and half are prisoners. Hedges began his career reporting on the Falkland Islands War from Argentina for National Public Radio. He went on to cover the wars in El Salvador and Nicaragua for five years, first for the Christian Science Monitor and National Public Radio, and later the Dallas Morning News. After six years in Latin America, he took time off to study Arabic. He spent seven years in the Middle East, most of them at, as the bureau chief for the New York Times. He left the Middle East in 95 for Sarajevo to cover the war in Bosnia and later reported the war in Kosovo. Afterwards, he was based in Paris as part of the team covering Al-Qaeda and global terrorism. He left the Times after receiving a formal reprimand from the newspaper for publicly denouncing George W. Bush administration's invasion of Iraq. Well, isn't that just special of the Times? That's kind of nice to know, isn't it? I guess freedom of speech stops at some point at our nation's um, bastion of journalism, the New York Times. Wow. Okay. This guy is obviously highly accomplished in many, many ways, and he's got to be brilliant even to just learn all these languages. But, you know, and whether you agree or disagree with his criticism of the Bush administration, gosh darn it, a journalist ought to be able to say that, so should a professor. Um, it says, in 2012, he successfully sued President Barack Obama over Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, which overturned the 1875 Posse Comitatus Act, prohibiting the military from acting as a domestic police force. Section 1021 gives the military the authority to indefinitely detain and deny due process to U.S. citizens who are branded by the state as terrorists. The decision was overturned on appeal by the Obama administration. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to review the ruling known as Hedges v. Obama in 2014. Wow, this guy's got some nerve. And uh, listen to this, listen to his education. Now this ought to give you pause if you think about, you know, all the criticism of uh, liberal arts education, how you can't do anything with such a thing, got to get an engineering degree. Listen to what this guy, who's a Pulitzer Prize winner, taught at Princeton, University of Toronto, on and on, author of best-selling books, says here, Hedges holds a BA in English literature <clears throat> from Colgate University and a Master of Divinity degree from Harvard University. How terribly impractical. He spent a year studying classics at Harvard as a Neiman Fellow. He was awarded an honorary doctorate from Star King School for Ministry in Berkeley, California. In 2014, he was ordained as a minister for social witness at the Second Presbyterian Church in Elizabeth, New, New Jersey. 
The theologian James Cone, the father of black liberation, liberation theology, preached the sermon along with Cornell West. The ordination was approved for his work in New Jersey prisons, where Hedges was taught college credit, has taught college credit courses for nearly a decade. So, let's see. He was, I'm almost finished. He was born in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, grew up in a small farm town in upstate New York, where his father served as a Presbyterian minister, lives in Princeton, New Jersey. He's married to Canadian actress Eunice Wong, with whom he has two children. He has two children from a previous marriage. So, wow, what a guy. Now, obviously, he leans a little bit to the left, and he's got this classical education. And my apologies to anybody who doesn't. I didn't mean it that way. It's just that as a professor in political science, I'm often told that um, my degree, which people perceive as relatively practical compared to English literature, is still not nearly practical enough, and yet we turn out people all the time who go off and do really great things with their jobs, jobs of all kinds, and it just, it just, I just like pointing out, you know, this very successful person has this just English literature bachelor's degree and a master of divinity, so he is, he does lean to the left, but he's a Christian, and he sounds like a, a darn serious Christian, uh, People may disagree with how he interprets it or some such thing, but it would be hard to say that Mr. Hedges isn't serious about this and, and, and about his other convictions. And the thing that I liked about the book, Death of the Liberal Class, which frankly is the only book by Hedges I've read so far, but I'd like to read more, is that he is extremely thorough um, in his investigation so that you know, you, you get a real sense that... Um, that what he's saying rings true. Like, he's got all sorts of facts to back him up. He makes a lot of sense. And he, he he's willing to present things that are counterintuitive and also to present things that don't go along with his ideology too well. And in this case, the book is a criticism of the so-called liberal class, of which he might even be identified as a member. Um, he was also willing to sue President Barack Obama. So obviously he's not, we, we can't say that he leans to the left in the sense that he is in lockstep with a particular party or um, a, a, a sort of like, um, oh, I don't know, jello pudding um, interpretation of liberalism, or what it means to be a liberal anyway. Um, this guy seems like, you know, he he's self-possessed and he's willing to um, pretty much say what he thinks is true regardless of whether it offends people who might be more identified on the left or the right. And that's kind of person that I admire and think maybe I can learn something from that guy. So anyway, there's Chris Hedges' bio for you. And the next time I come back, I'll be dealing probably, I'll probably got to check this again and see if the introduction's worth talking about, but it'll either be the either be the introduction or the first chapter in the book, Death of the Liberal Class. So thanks and hang in there with me. It will be worth it. Bye.